joining me now, a world-renowned physicist. He's asking some very tough questions like, what is the future of mankind? Why does the universe exist? Now, you might get answers from someone like this guy here joining me now, Brian Cox. How are you doing, sir? Very well, thank you. Pleasure to be with you. Good, good, good. Okay, so now you have this show coming up, uh, Horizons, a 21st century space odyssey to the old uh, National Center on su Sunday, March 8th. Uh, what can people look forward to in this show? Well, as, as you said, it's an exploration of um, the biggest questions. I think that considering the size and scale of the universe raises these questions. I mean, when, when I say to you that our planet is one planet around one star amongst 400 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy, and the Milky Way galaxy itself is one of two trillion galaxies in the observable universe, and we're now beginning to suspect there may be multiple universes, perhaps an infinite sea of bubble universes, then I think that once you get over the numbers, <laughs> then I think that raises quite profound questions about our place. And so the show is partly you know, a graphical spectacular. We talk about black holes and the origin of life in the universe, the, origin, the, the beginning of time, the end of time. But it's also very much trying to discuss what that means. Um, because it clearly means something. When it came to this journey for you, uh, to, obviously you have to be curious uh, to do what you do. Uh, what what kind of surprised you along this journey to, to discovering the things you've discovered? Oh, the most surprising thing, I think, at the moment is the study of black holes. So black holes, I think everybody knows about them in science fiction. Um, but in the last couple of years, the the, the study of them, has begun to suggest that even space and time, so there's things that we think of as completely, you know, we don't even give them a second thought probably. Space is the room that we're in and time is the thing that ticks on our watch. But we're beginning to, we're beginning to suspect that even those are somehow built out of smaller things. I mean, imagine that. I mean, the idea of, I suppose, atoms of time. What a strange idea. Uh, but we've been led to it from work, actually inspired by work that Stephen Hawking did 50 years ago that's beginning to be answered now. And I find that you know, tremendously surprising that we've got that far. Wow. Now, you have an optimistic vision of our future. Um, what is that vision and how do you hope to make it happen? Well, one of the, the big ideas that, that I come to in the show is um, the idea that it's possible that there may be very few, perhaps even one civilization in our galaxy at the moment, and that might be us. And imagine that. Um, that means that nowhere else in this island of 400 billion stars is there anywhere where people can even have a conversation like we're having now. The, the, no music, no art, no, nothing at all, apart from rocks orbiting around suns. And so I, I, we, we have a discussion in the show about what the, our future might be like, uh, remembering that that future might be the future of a galaxy, which is quite a... A shocking and powerful thought, I think. I mean, it means that, yes, we're very tiny, but also we might be extremely valuable um, because we might be the only chance this galaxy has to be a living galaxy. So, um, so, so I have some science fiction visions of what our future in, in space might be. You know, and it, it seemed like science fiction 10 years ago that we'd be routinely flying to orbit and then perhaps to the moon and Mars. But as we've seen in the last few years, um, companies like SpaceX, uh, Elon Musk's company, Jeff Bezos's company are beginning to build those rockets now that might be our first steps into what my great hero, Carl Sagan, said was the cosmic ocean. And this wonderful poetic idea that we've taken our first steps into the cosmic ocean. And he always used to say, and the water seems inviting. Awesome. Awesome. Um, now, when it comes to uh, some things you have going on, you appeared in the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who. Uh, so I have to ask you, will time travel ever become a reality, you think? You know, I talk about that a bit in the show because um, um, probably not um, is the answer. Oh. We're, not <laughs> we're not entirely sure. In, in the last few years, there, there's an idea that we'll all know, science fiction fans know about wormholes. Right, these things that connect different bits of space and they're in interstellar and every film that you watch. And, and um, but it looks like those things do exist, perhaps in the universe. Um, but the general sort of idea is that you can't travel through them to take your trip back in time. Um, but I would say that it's not proven yet. <laughs> so you can just cling on to that. Where would you go? <laughs> where would where, you go? Ooh, where would I go? Where would I go? Time travel? I'm going back to maybe senior high school. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back and go senior year in high school. There's like this little pothole that I really want to avoid. I twist my ankle up real bad. I'm like, you know, if I avoid that pothole, I might, I might, I might be somebody on the football field. Oh, so you wouldn't, so you wouldn't go back to see the pyramids constructed or the Roman Empire. You go, just go back to high school. That was, that was way better. That was. Way better. <laughs> Let's go. I'm like, can I trade mine? I'm going to trade <laughs> mine. Pyramids sound really cool. Yeah. Oh man. So Brian, uh, before we let you go, is there anything? that you feel like uh, doing these shows has really left uh, the fans or the audience in awe, like something that just kind of blown their mind? I think what I hope is that um, people go out and look at the night sky a little bit differently um, because th- those points of light in the sky are suns and the suns, most of them we know have planets around them. And then you can begin to let your imagination wander. So th- that's what I hope. I hope they look at the sky differently and our planet differently. Because, as I said, it's so easy to think this place is um, is just, you know, a tiny speck of dust in a vast universe, which it is. But also what I try to say is that it might be incredibly valuable because life exists here. So I just want the, I'd like people to think just a bit more about the value of our world and the majesty of the night sky. Well, it's, it's ama- it sounds amazing. Brian, thank you so much for taking the time. We can't wait for the show. Coming to us on May 8th at the Old National Center, you have Brian Cox, world-renowned physicist, Ready to give you a shot.